imagine yourself in a tiny cage for an hour with a toothache, with a full metal jacket on, a rusty catheter protruding from an open wound. Imagine your fingertips chopped off and your nails ripped out and your teeth ripped out, exposing the nerves. Imagine one of your legs or your arms ripped off from a trap you walked into. Then imagine the excruciating pain from a multitude of diseases you've developed internally and externally. Now try and imagine this all happening for a week. Now try and imagine this happening for a month or a year or 20 or 30 years. Okay, now imagine after enduring so much pain that some people come and take you away and look after you, and medicate you and show you how to run free and show you how to sleep on your back with your legs in the air. These are just some of the things Animals Asia do. I want to show you why I'm so passionate about doing all I can to stop this insane, senseless torture and to allow Jill and her amazing team to continue doing the work that they do. To end the barbaric practice of bear farming and the vile trade. This is Animals Asia. Absolutely, this is one of the legacies of bear farming. Um, these crude jackets that cut into their bodies and obviously inside you've got the bag that extracts the bile through a latex catheter deep into their gallbladder which is surgically implanted. It's hideous. This is some of the crazy crap that bear bile is used for. Toothpaste, eye cream, hemorrhoid cream, bear bile wine. You know, the bear bile can't be that good for you. In fact, it's proved that it's killing people. Coming from open wounds like this, it's filled with blood, feces, urine, and pus. And the buying public don't know that they're buying that, do they? Well, not at all. How would they know that they're buying something that is potentially going to do them so much harm and perhaps even kill them? How can that be good for anyone? I love and I hate this part of the park. I think that these beautiful creatures have been stuck in these cages for most of their life. 
just kills me. So Jill, this is where you've uh, buried each and every bear that's lived here. Yeah, I mean this is our last goodbye to bears that we've loved and lost. It's a place of peace and love and respect. It's a beautiful energy here. I love. We were here yesterday and it's just amazing. He's a big bear, isn't he? And he's about 30 years old. Been stuck in cages for 30 years. And he had the metal jacket. Yeah. He had the yeah. full metal jacket for 30 years in a, in a, a cage. Metal ring embedded in his abdomen. Metal ring embedded in his abdomen. Gold bladder in place. Wow. Bringing it to the front of the abdomen. Wow, he's slow, isn't he? Look at those legs. Oh. Is he arthritic pain Very. too? Very he's arthritic. On, he's on drugs. Painkillers. Anti-inflammatory. But look at him now. Food. Able to run free. Well, walk slowly free. This is great too, Jill, because you uh, put... All the food is in random places and you have different um, smells around the place, yeah? Yep, every day. Um, there's different smears laid out, chocolate sauce and honey or lemon juice or lavender. And what's the reason for that? Why, why is it so random and why is it different every day? Well, in the wild, bears, you know, obviously have natural foraging instincts and we want to replicate that as much as we can. And apart from encouraging the forest foraging, it also encourages, um, you know, less dominant behaviour. So while they're keeping busy, they're less inclined to be arguing with each other. Mm. What do they do there? They, um, they grow... Uh, Sea monkeys in there. <laughs> sea monkeys that uh, live amongst the um, water lilies. forage amongst, amongst water lilies, and um, then they go and climb in the bear hair. So they're only about this big. So yeah, sea monkeys live in there, and you can actually find that this is the farm that uh, the cartoons, you know, like the, the comic books. That's where they farm them. It's rather than right. the bear farms, it's the sea monkey farm. Awesome. Or something like that, I don't know. Now, yeah, Jill, who names them? Um, our supporters around the world, that's why we've got bears with ridiculous names. Right. Um, well, we're, we're just wondering if we can get one named Tanty. Oh. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Yeah. Yeah. You have to talk to Anne and Jude. They're the gatekeepers. Okay. <laughs> What are you doing, Peter? I'm going to cut some nails. Cool. It's very similar to Monkey Boy Ziggy the Monster Dog's nails. <laughs> so we want to get rid of the tops. Really Just the tips, yeah. Um, again, you know, bears that die here over 30% died of liver cancer. So that's, so an ultrasound machine, again, if we could get a really, you know, good, reliable ultrasound machine, um, that would help us tremendously because we're scanning for liver cancers. Um, um, we're finding more bears with heart disease as well, so that could be related again to very poor nutrition. It could be related to infection that's seeded from their teeth, from chronic infection of the gallbladders and spreading throughout the bodies. What I want you to see is the, the amount of drugs that are needed here to keep the place going. So just as an idea. Obviously the drugs to euthanize the bears. Yeah. Unfortunately when we're doing a rescue we often need a lot of those as well and that's hellishly expensive. Yeah. A mass of antibiotics, remember yeah. again, we can never get cheap antibiotics yeah. because the bears have built up a resistance to them on the farms because they've been given such so cheap many drugs. Cheap shit, yeah. So we have to get you know the top range right. antibiotics to keep them alive. Um, and again, so these are all just a list of yes, you know yes. health health problems that's related to the conditions, yeah. the horrible conditions in which they're kept. So trying to manage them appropriately is always a challenge yeah. financially to be able to afford. And I guess the hardest thing is because they're so resilient and they don't they, they can handle so much pain, 
this is it's trying to recover and find out exactly what's wrong with it. Absolutely, and it's a constant challenge for us to make sure that we're managing them appropriately and managing yeah. them appropriately. So, you know, our our priority here is really their quality of life. Yeah, hence, and, 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 you know, going back, you know, when they were on farms, that, that there was no medication, there was no care given. And uh, that because they're so resilient, that the farmers actually take major advantage of that. Absolutely. So, when's it going to end? In your lifetime. Yep. Right. I can trust you, you're a doctor. Yes, I'm a doctor. Shaving. Shaving. I do it myself just to maintain that I thought I'd give it share the love. You know it's it's an expensive exercise to keep these bears here. I mean the beautiful thing is they're allowed to run free. As you can see, look I'm you know a couple of feet away from some of the most beautiful animals. But it's an expensive exercise. Apparently, it takes it costs about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars US dollars a month to look after one bear. So it does take a lot when it when you take into account the drugs, the food, the, the, the repairs on the place, just the maintenance and everything that goes into it. It needs a lot of money to run. Here, the bears can live out the rest of their lives in dignity. So Jill, what, a, what an incredible experience we've had here for the last couple of days. And, and to be in there and see the operation was a, a major bonus. We know where the bears have been. We know where the bears are now. What's the future for Animals Asia? Well, I mean, you've seen the passion just resonating through the team here over the last couple of days that you and Tantu have been on site. And, you know, I think just most inspiring is that this passion resonates now across the whole of the country. There's just literally hundreds of thousands of people now and growing every year that hate the bear farming industry and we're finally reaching them. And I think that is going to be the most compelling, um, you know, reason for bear farming to end. And I promise you, Peter, we ain't never giving up until the very last bear farm is closed. Mm. When do you think that will be? In my lifetime. In your lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say as well, it's been such an enormous thrill having you guys out here. I can't tell you, you know, just to see the bears through your eyes yeah. is just incredibly emotional for all of oh, us. So thank you for thank coming you. out here. Thank so. you, Jill. <laughs> all right, future of Animals Asia. Till the very last bear farm is closed.